our blessings are in our ability to believe what Christ has done. Are you listening? So it, it, it was imperative that he rise from the dead so that he could give us power to become the sons of God. Kingdom Vision Christian Center presents the Kingdom Experience with Pastor Kevin Brown. Let me walk, let me just walk over here for a minute. Let me just, let me just, come here. Everybody should be praising God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me just walk over here for a minute. How many of you were here on Wednesday night? Who was here on Wednesday night? Who was here on Wednesday night? Who was here on Wednesday night? Hallelujah. Where your husband at? Come here, young man. Your husband came with you on Wednesday night. And uh, we didn't do anything. All we did is come into agreement. We prayed the prayer of praise. And you were supposed to have a surgery. Major surgery. She was, listen, Saint. She was supposed to have major surgery on Thursday. But I told her, I said, listen, darling. I said, listen, darling. <laughs> I said, come to the, did I tell you? I said, come to the church and let us pray for you. Listen, not only did she do that, she came to service before, so she got some word. And she said, Pastor, they're supposed to do the surgery on Thursday. I said, well, can you get here Wednesday night? She said, yeah, I think I can get here Wednesday night. And she came, and brother, I said, my husband's going to come with me. I said, okay, God bless you. She came, and those of you who were here on Wednesday night, we prayed with you and for you. We laid hands on her in the name of the Lord. And she fell down on the floor right there for a little while. Any of of y'all remember that? And Thursday, she was supposed to go have surgery, major surgery. What happened? Pioneer. Yeah. You spoke about the pioneer. So the that pioneer, girl remembered. <laughs> the pioneer was working on me. Wow. It wasn't a resident. It wasn't a student. It was the pioneer. <laughs> and he came in and he sat down and he's 80 years old. And he said to me, he said, baby doll, because I can't do it. This is the surgeon now. Because of the, any other students, the residents, you know, they would cut me open. They would explore, like you said. But he looked at me, he said, I will be dumb, stupid, and crazy to open you up. Wow. And he looked at my husband, he patted him on the back, he said, because your wife wouldn't have made it off that table. Wow. And I'm here. Amen. Go ahead and praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, he is still in the healing business. So oh. all you gotta do, let me tell you something. All you gotta do. Continue to listen to those messages. Faith and healing. You hear me, hubby? Faith and healing. Continue to listen to faith and healing. You understand? God is doing the work in you. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Glory to God. Come on, give God praise. See? Have your seat. Have your seat. We, we are not looking for religion. Jesus didn't come to bring us religion. He came to bring us relationship. Anything can be a religion. Did you hear what I said? Anything can be made a religion. But Christ did not come to bring us religion. He came to bring us relationship. A true 
relationship between a God creator and his creation. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh. We serve a real God. Yeah. We don't serve a picture or poster Jesus. or an image. Woo. We serve the true and living God. Yeah. Listen, the one who created you, that's who we serve. Not just any old God, the true and living God. Are you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> and our God is still in the healing business. The Bible told, tells me that he healed us. The Bible tells me that it is a finished work. It is not a new work. It is a finished work. He healed us over 2,000 years ago. If I can only get people to raise their faith to a level that they can receive. <laughs> the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 8, for what say of it? The word, it is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, mouth and in thy heart. We're not talking about your physical heart. We're not talking about the heart that pumps blood. We're talking about the realm of the spirit. When we talk about the heart now, we're talking about in the realm of the spirit. The heart of your spirit. That if thou shalt confess with your own mouth. Let me, let me talk to y'all for a minute. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Turn, turn, turn to the book of Romans. Chapter 10. So you know, that, you know, you know I'm, what I'm saying to this morning is the word of God. I'm not just making up something. Let me tell y'all. This, this is a viable principle in the word of God that will change your life Every day. <laughs> Not just one time, but it will change your life all of the time. <laughs> when you get revelation, inside and understanding, you begin to operate in the realm of the spirit. You begin to operate in God's word. You are always changing. You are always growing. You are always experiencing what? The realm of the spirit. Because Jesus said, my words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes. So you got to understand that even though you are material, you know, we are flesh, that's not the sum total of who you are. You are a spiritual being. That's who you are. You are a, say that with me, I am, I am. a spiritual being. Right. That's who and what you are. You are not flesh. <laughs> this is just the house that you live in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We love it so much. You know, we love it so much. Yeah. You know, we take care of it, you know, most of us. You know what I'm saying? Some of us. Glory to God. But I, I got to get you to get past you. If I can get people to get past themselves. <laughs> and see themselves the way God sees you, made you. In other words, you begin to put more importance, more significance on the part of you that you don't see. Are you listening to me? We spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on the part of us that we do see. But we're not, we're not willing to invest in the part of us that we don't see. Which is, which is the most important part of every human being. Right. Why? Because we came from God. Yes. And God is a spirit. God is a spirit. Do you understand? That means we came from spirit. We came from God. God, listen, God breathed and we came out of God. We, actually, we are, we are the essence of God. God took us out of himself. He didn't make us from anything but himself. We came out of God. How many understand what I'm saying? So, your body was made from what God created. You understand what I'm saying? 
How do you know? Because the Bible says he created the heavens and the earth. Your physical body came from what God created, the earth. But you, the spirit, you, the person that you really are, you came right out of God. Like a woman bearing a child. You came directly out of God in Adam. Every, listen, every spiritual being, every spiritual being came out of God from Adam. So, God had to create a woman. He made them male and female. Am I right? <laughs> In order for the world to populate. That's right. That's right. So, God created Adam, which is spirit, and Eve, which is what? Spirit. Then he gave them physical manifestation, male and female in order for man to multiply. That's why there's no such thing as Adam and Steve. Did you hear what I said? There's no such thing as Adam and Steve. Why? Because they cannot fulfill the will of God. You know what I mean? I'm saying? When God said, be fruitful and multiply, Adam and Steve will never multiply. Did you hear what I said? Adam and Steve would never multiply. If God made Adam and Steve in the garden, Adam and Steve would still be in the garden today. <laughs> there won't be no multiplication. So everything, everything that God, listen, everything that God intended for the earth to look like and to come into being, it was already wrapped up in Adam. So God, in order for, in order for God to get it out of Adam, he had, he had to create the sex, the woman. Because the woman was the only one that can draw out of Adam what God had placed in him. You're not hearing what I'm saying. What do you mean? I mean that the seed is in the male. <laughs> you didn't hear that right. You didn't hear that right. The seed is in the male. And it took the woman to draw out that seed. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because everything that God created was already in Adam. Yeah. <laughs> so God didn't have to duplicate another man, another man, another man, another man. No, he put everything in Adam. Yeah. And then he created the woman to bring it out of him. Yeah. We just, the men today, we just need to wake up and realize we're not for every woman. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God has the woman for you. And the woman that he created for you is the woman that he created to draw out that's within you, out of you. The goodness that's in you, God created the woman to bring it right out of you. That's why you, you can't just marry anybody. Men, women, you can't just marry anybody. Because God has the right person for you to bring out the best in you. Hallelujah. If you think about it for a while, you'll you, you understand what I'm saying. You marry the wrong one, they bring out the worst in you. <laughs> you didn't hear what I just said. You mess around and marry the wrong one, they'll be bringing out the worst in you. You'll be bringing out stuff you didn't know was in you. <laughs> Why? Because the Bible says God created the woman to be a help meet. Help meet. Help meet. You understand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But man is a spiritual being. That's who we are. We're no longer natural. When we are born again into the kingdom, our spirits are recreated in the image and likeness of God. And now we begin to live a life in the kingdom, we, be we begin to live a supernatural life. That's God's best for us. God don't want us to live like natural people. I'm going to say that one more time. God doesn't want us to live like natural people. That's what Paul was saying. Paul said, I came to bring you me. In the book of Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 3, I think it's chapter 3, verse Cor 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul said, listen, I came to, I came to bring you meat, man. But I realized after being around you guys for a little while, your, your spiritual babies. 
In other words, you're still acting like natural people. That's what he was saying. He said, I wanted to bring you spiritual meat, but my God, you would choke on it if I gave you spiritual meat because you don't realize that you are a spiritual being. You're still trying to act like you're natural. My God. The only thing that's important to you are natural things. Stop thinking that way. You are now a spiritual being. You have been awakened unto righteousness. You have been awakened unto righteousness. Stop trying to live beneath your privilege. You're no longer there. Some of you are, you know, you know, sometimes you graduate, you want to go back. You, did a, you already did ninth grade. You're in college now. Why do you want to go back to ninth grade? You're in college now. Rise to the occasion. Understand who you are and begin to live that life. That's why it's no, it should be, it should be a common thing that folk get healed. We, sh- we should not be amazed. Listen to me. We should not be amazed when a miracle happens. But when you are amazed when a miracle happens, you know what that means? You're not yet spiritual enough yet. What? God did what? <laughs> no, we should be like, well, we expect that to happen. We know that. We know that. that that's common among us. That's common. <laughs> you don't hear what I'm saying there. <laughs> <Shoot. Yeah. laughs> it means that we have to grow up spiritually. Yeah. But we refuse to take on the responsibility. We want God to do everything. That's right. I'm serious. We want God to pray for us. <laughs> My God, we want God to do everything. <laughs> we want God to go get the job for us. You know, we want God to do everything. Well, what are you going to do? We don't want to come to prayer. I'm serious. You know what that means? It means that we're not yet trying to be spiritual. We still want to be common. We we want to be natural. We want to be carnal. Because it's comfortable there. It's comfortable just not changing. Mm. I don't know. But my point is, in the book of Romans, chapter 10, although I forgot, I didn't forget. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, I want you to look at something. See, I'm being led by the Spirit because <laughs> I just realized I don't know what I'm going to preach no more. I know what I'm studying, but I don't know what I'm going to preach. <laughs> but in the book of Romans, let me tell you something. This is a principle that if you can grasp what I'm trying to say this morning, you begin to see that this principle is supposed to operate in your life all of the time. But most of the time, we can only connect this principle to salvation. Now, Romans chapter 10. For what saith it? The word. It is what? It's nigh thee. What else does it say? Even in thy mouth. Where is it at? Where is it at? What is in your mouth? The word. Is the word in your mouth? See, that's you got to ask yourself this. While I'm reading this, while while you're reading this, you must ask yourself, where is the word? Is the word in your mouth? Because if the word is not in your mouth, then what is in your mouth? Because what we're saying is that the spirit of God is in my mouth. Why? Because the spirit of God is his word. Prove that. St. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. What was in the beginning? The word. What was in the beginning? The word. So that means God does nothing without the Word first. If, the, if he said in the beginning was the Word, that means God never does anything without the Word first. Did you hear what I said? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was what? With God. 
and the Word was God. Then he says, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. But everything begins with the Word. So what is in your mouth? The Word. The Word's supposed to be in your mouth. In the beginning. You're supposed to start with the Word, not end with it. That's right. Amen. You're supposed to what? Start with the word. Amen. Well, I'm going to show you something here. He said, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. And then what else he says? In thy heart. Now, we're not talking about the heart that pumps blood. That's the physical heart. You're still talking about your physical body. Am I right? Amen. Well, when, when he's talking about the word being in your heart, he's not talking about your physical heart. He's talking about the spiritual heart or the realm of the spirit because you are a spiritual being. You follow what I'm saying? Amen. So the word is not only supposed to be in your mouth. The word has to be where? In your heart. Now, that's a principle. The word has to be in your heart and the word has to be in your mouth. Paul said, I speak those things. I think it's in Corinthians. Paul says, I speak those things that are in the heart. The things I'm speaking are the things that are in the heart. Because the things that are in the heart are the things that you believe. Amen. That's why it's imperative that we get the word in our hearts. Because when we get the word in our hearts, they'll come out of your mouth. Come on now. Yes, sir. Glory. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Did you? Not in your mind, in the realm of the spirit. Your heart. Yes. Now, he says... The word is not even in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. We preach what? But it says the word of faith. Did it say that? Amen. The word of what? Faith. Right, the word of faith. I mean, in other words, listen, the foundation of your faith has to come from the word. Yes. That's right. Because the word produces faith. Amen. Faith and the word are equivalent. You can't have faith and not have the word. And you cannot have the word and not have faith. That's right. That's right. The word produces faith. Yes. Yes. That's why the Bible says you have to hear it. Yes. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing what? The word there you go. <laughs> so the more words you hear, I said it one more time. The more words you hear, what what happens? Exactly. So now, the word which is in your heart, which it has to be in your heart, right? And once it's in your heart, you begin to confess that word. It becomes synonymous. It, it, it becomes automatic because it's in your heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the what? Issues. Issues of what? Why? Why? Because most people... They may cover up for a little while. They may be able to hold up for a little while. But if it's in your heart, it's going to manifest. Yeah. Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's in your heart, eventually, sooner or later, it's going to come out. Yeah. That's right. that, now, now, that's speaking from a negative perspective. Do you understand? So it shows you how significant, how important yeah. it is for things to be in the heart. Yeah. But one thing that I have, I have learned, it's easy to get negative things in the heart. Let somebody talk about you. Say evil things about you. My God. You be thinking about them. You be meditating on that stuff. And eventually, it goes from meditation into your heart. And your actions. Now, now listen to me. Now, because it's in your heart, your actions, the way you act, your, your, your body language changes. Based on what's in your heart. Yeah, 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 listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you begin to, you know, you can't be around that person no more. You don't like to be around that person. You walk by that person, don't want to say nothing to that person. When you're in the room with that person, you, you start getting nervous. Your, your stomach feels funny. All kind of stuff. Why? Stuff has already gotten into your heart. It will affect you. Well, if that is true, when we talk about negative things, well, if that is true, 
when we're talking about guarding your heart against negative things. Why is it so hard to get the word of God into our heart? I'm going to tell you. You know why? Because we don't meditate on those things. We meditate on the negative things. It's so easy. Your, your ladies know what I'm talking about. You don't know exactly what I'm talking about. That's the truth. They be thinking about stuff. Like with men, men are a little, men are a little different. A little, just a little different. Because yeah, I can say this because I work, you know, in, in, in my profession, I work primarily with the ladies, with females. You know, it was only like about 10, or 10 guys on the job and the other 150 were, were the females, women. And something was always going on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, things that we had no we we had no knowledge about. You know, the men's in the office, we had no knowledge about all the confusion and things like that that was going on in the office. And it was all based on stuff that had been said. More motivation, more stir up, more problems based on things that were said. We in the office, I'm just as ignorant, don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know why? Because we sp spend a lot of time focusing, say focusing, focusing. on s negative stuff. And what happens, it messes up your spirit. It, 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 it disturbs your disposition in the heart. If we would take that same energy and on purpose meditate on the truth, it'll get into your heart. Once it gets into your heart, I don't care what's going on, you're going to confess it. It changes your disposition. It changes the way you act. See, listen, because listen, you got to understand, we are now Children of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. We're no longer at the bottom. We're on top. And because, listen, because we believe that, our attitude changes. Yes. Now, now listen to me, listen to me. Now, naturally speaking, your situation hasn't changed. You're still living on Section 8. Listen what I'm saying now. You're still wearing the same old shoes. You still got food stamps. But that doesn't mean anything. Because what has happened, the change has taken place on the inside of you. And because the change has taken place on the inside of you, that word begins to elevate you. It begins to take you from where you at to another level. You, 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 you don't understand. See, the word in itself is power. But it's only the word that is in our hearts and the words that we begin to confess. It's a principle. So he says, let's look at it in the book of Romans. I'm going to turn to it. Chapter 10, right? Verse 8. Let's go to verse 9. Because I think I read 8. Look at verse 9. It says in verse 9, it says, uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. Thou shalt be what? Saved. But you know what the problem is? We always limit that to salvation. That's right. But it's not limited to salvation. How do you know that? Because of the word there, saved. See that word says saved right there? Underline that word. If you got something to write it down with, take a, if you don't have anything to write it down with, take a mental note. That word is very important. That word saved. Say saved. Save. That word in the Greek means sozo. S-O-Z-O. Say sozo. Sozo. Now this word sozo in the Greek, whoo, <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. It means to be made whole. i say it one more time. It means to be made whole. Let me ask you something. Think about it before you answer it. When you get saved, are you made whole? No. You're not made whole yet. <laughs> Be
Because uh, that word saved has everything to do with the whole man. You are spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in the body. To be made whole deals with the entire man. Even though you are born again, you have not been made whole yet. What do you mean? Well, you know, Jesus comes in immediately when we receive him, right? We confess with our mouths, we believe in our, in our heart that, you know, God raised him from the dead. We come to Jesus, listen to me, we come to Jesus because we are sinners. Most of us come to Jesus because we are sinners. We don't want to go to hell. Am I right? Well, just because you're not going to hell, it doesn't mean you're made whole. Because, because salvation is the grace of God. It's, it's unmerited favor. In other words, you don't have anything to do with it. Jesus has everything to do with it. Your salvation when it, when it refers to being born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus, I know you're religious. I know you know the law and things like that. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to get you into the kingdom. You got to be born again. Well, to be born again is a supernatural act of God. Based on your believing, right? Well, most people come to God because they're trying to avoid hell. Well, if that's why you come to God because you're trying to avoid hell, well, you have accomplished that through Christ. But that doesn't mean you have been made whole. What do you mean, pastor? Well, your body's still sick. You still got cancer. You still got sugar. Your soul is all messed up. You, still, you are still wounded by the way your parents raised you. You didn't have a father. You didn't have a mother. You were born again, but the Bible says in the book of James, chapter what? 2, verse 21, 